What's up everybody, welcome back to yet another video of Channel Codex. In this video, we will learn about HTTP methods. These methods are used to perform CRUD operations so you can read, write and delete some of the data from REST API. So here we are inside VS Code with a brand new Flutter project. The only thing I have done is used this custom app button and created four of them and then provided a little bit decoration with a background of a scaffold. You can refer this code anytime on GitHub. So don't worry about the UI part. It's just, uh, you know, we have to write code on on pressed event. So let's get started with the actual implementation of base client. For that purpose, I'm going to create one file which will hold all the common operation so that you can call it from any place and I'm going to name it base client. Now inside this class we need four methods to perform all the four different operations. So first will be get and of course this is going to be asynchronous and data will be coming in future so that you can define future of dynamic because you don't know what data you are going to get and this method will accept API as a parameter and same thing we are going to duplicate for rest of the methods for post, put and delete. And just a quick tip, you can use option shift and down arrow to duplicate the lines and use option and just arrows to move the lines up and down. Cool. Now let's go ahead and start implementing the get method. For that, we need HTTP client and you can use pretty much any client you want. Get connect will work. Dio client is also fine. But here I'm going to stick with HTTP, which is provided by Dart. So just add the dependency and import the reference and I'm going to also name it as HTTP so that we can use it with ease. And now what I'm going to do is create a global client, you know, at the global scope so that we can use it in all the methods. So let's go ahead and utilize this client to perform our first operation, which is get. Now, as soon as you use get method, it is going to ask you for URI. So you cannot pass a string as a parameter. It is uh, demanding for the URI, which is a passed URL. Okay. And that we are going to form with the help of URI.parse. Cool. Now here I want to introduce you to something called base URL because we don't want to pass the same information again and again. So in the URL where you have the domain and the folder structure where you keep your API is going to be common for every single API. So that is something you can keep inside a constant global scope and use it everywhere inside your application. And the remaining part is going to be your endpoint, which you will be passing from your user interface to perform any action. So now when we have provided the correct API to fetch data from, now let's capture the response from this get request. And you can always await for the response because this is going to come in the future. And as a rule of thumb, always when you perform any uh, HTTP operation, you make sure that the response was successful and you do that by checking status code 200. So 201, 204, all those things, uh, all those status code are success status code in the range of 200 and anything other than that like 300 400 or 500 range are going to be your failure case but we are not going to talk about 204 and 1 in this case particular so let's say that 200 is a success and others are failure case and in case of success you are going to return the actual content which is a body and otherwise you are going to throw exception which i'm not going to do now i'm just going to show you the happy scenario case and some of you may raise eyebrow, but of course we cannot cover everything inside a single tutorial. So if you want to know more about that, you can learn privately uh, on my Kofi channel. And if you want some other videos, you can write down in the comment section below. Okay, let's get back to the topic. So here what I'm doing, I'm creating headers uh, to pass in this get request. And generally there are two type of headers. One is a standard header like authorization, content type, accept, and all those things. And there are headers which are custom defined. So if your server requires some information like API key in certain form or, uh, you know, just for logging purpose, what was the device? What was the version of the application? So you can pass all those information as a custom header as well. And there's no different uh, syntax for that. You just keep adding uh, the key value pair inside your map. And then you pass that as a header parameter inside client.get. 
and as a side note let me tell you that these headers are string comma string so you cannot pass some integer value or boolean data always you have to keep it string data okay i know that the video is getting a little bit lengthier and you're getting a little bit bored but trust me once we have set the base and created this get method we're just going to duplicate this and use it for other methods so it's just going to be a piece of cake once we have done a get request all right now let's go ahead and utilize what we have done so far so i'm going to use base client and call the get method which we implemented just now and pass the api as users perfect now let's capture the response somewhere in a variable called response and of course this is going to be future call so we have to use await and also you can catch any error which you have thrown from the base implementation now once you are done with the api call you have to make sure that your response is not null and it will be null in the case of any exception so if it is just null then return it from here we don't have to do anything but if the data is there then we're going to pass it and then we will display it to user interface but in this case i'm just going to write debug print so that we know that the request is successful a big round of applause because we have successfully integrated our get api and this is like a base implementation you can get any information users or comments or any api you can call perfect because you are still watching the video i'm quite sure that you're enjoying it so a like will be awesome it will help this video to reach out to more developers who want to understand how things work with rest call okay so now what i have done here is basically whatever response we have received from postman i just copied in quick type and then generated a model of it i have shown that in many of my videos and this is the simplest way to generate a model you just create a file and then paste whatever you have generated on app.quicktype i will put link in the description so you can follow along there and now one thing you have to do here for sure that you need to mark uh, nullable like what field can go null and what field have a required data so once you do that like it's a simple thing you just mark question uh, you just put a question mark in front of every property so it becomes optional and of course when it becomes optional you need to do a null check and uh, uh, some places it's just easy you just put a question mark and some places you need to uh, properly check for null data and in right if else condition so if it is null then do this otherwise do this some sort of that operation you need to perform and this is for uh, you know good sake you your application will be robust it will not fail anytime like because of null data so that's a little bit of work here once you generate the model but uh, apart from that you got so many lines of code auto generated kudos to the quick type developers now i just want to brief you about this two json method because this is something when you call a post request your object gets converted to to json and that json is being sent to the server so you don't want to specify when it was created what was the id you know those all information you don't need to pass server will generate automatically and in our case we are also going to remove the avatar because our faker api is capable of generating the avatar itself you can remove the name as well our faker api is capable of generating names so this is something specific to this api right so if you have some post api your server will tell you what information they need and your to json should have only those parameters you don't need to pass others thing like uh, id and created it and all those information right this is only for get purpose and back to our page we will call user from json method which was generated by app.quicktype and pass our information and it will give you the list of user you don't have to do any parsing or any logical stuff and what i'm going to do now i'm just going to print how many users are there so we'll print users length and i'm not going to do binding and all those stuff because once you get the proper object you can do pretty much anything you want all right so now we are done with the get implementation let's go ahead and restart our application and see if we're getting the proper user count or not and here we have it a successful response with a user count of one a big round of applause once again uh, for you guys to sticking till this end okay now let's move forward and try to implement the post api we are going to copy the same content of get method and i will just paste inside post because the whole implementation remains same there's only difference that post method accepts one uh, parameter for payload like what information you want to post to the server and in that case we have 
a dynamic object because we don't know what you want to send maybe you want to send user maybe you want to send comment maybe you want to send some image so this is going to be dynamic and what we will do we will encode the object in json so that it can convert to a map and it utilizes the two JSON method which we have tweaked earlier uh, for this mapping purpose and this payload we are going to pass inside a post method in the body parameter now there's one more thing which is different than the get request that once you execute your post method you are going to get 201 as a success code and this is not the case always 201 will come once the record is created inside the table but post method sometime is used as a secure way to pass information and get some information back so in that case you will get 200 uh, status code so both are fine you can put both conditions here if request is, uh, status code is either 200 or 201 you can uh, you know pass the response body as a success state cool now similar way we have called the get request i'm just going to copy that code and we will call for post and now you'll notice here that it's giving error and the reason because it is asking for one extra uh, parameter which is our payload right so we will create a user object now you can think of it as a user form where user is typing his name and providing all the qualification details so what we are doing is getting all the information and putting inside a user object because we don't want to work with a form and write all the validation it's pretty simple you can follow a lot of tutorial out there on the youtube how to create form and how to get the data in controller and then from controller read that information so that is not something we are going to focus in this video particularly we'll just generate some of the dummy data like i'm going to provide my name as auxiliary without any input box something like that and then provide some qualification detail and of course it's a fake data so don't relate it with my uh, qualification okay and once we have the object user object ready we're going to pass it as a parameter to the post method which have which we have already done so now it's time to run the application and see whether our post method is working or not and this was a little bit uh, complicated part like uh, other things are comparatively easy than post method and here we have it the successful response uh, now let's go ahead and verify whether this is working properly or not and fortunately we have an error so let's try to find out the root cause because we didn't perform a null check on the JSON data so we can fix this issue by performing a null check but of course there's something more to that we'll discuss that in a moment so let's go ahead and put a null check if data is not null then perform this operation otherwise just give me an empty array so that's a simple check over there just to verify we will hit the get request again and we are getting a proper uh, user count as 2 which is fine now let's go ahead and check the data why the issue happened actually why the qualification was null whereas I have specified it so you will see that the server has generated all the automated properties like ID avatar created ad but it didn't uh, took the value of qualification and the reason because when we created a post method we didn't define like i didn't define what is my payload type now what do i mean with that whenever you are calling a post request it transforms the data in particular type like it can be a text it can be a uh, x form url encoded so you have to explicitly define in this particular case what is your data type and that is only applicable for post method inside get you don't need to do that because you're not passing any information so here i will just define content type is application slash json because we are passing a json data right so now let's go ahead and execute the application one more time and we got the success response congratulations so get is working fine we have three requests now three users now and we just created one more uh user so let's go ahead and verify that on postman what is the third user looks like we should have qualification this time okay postman is taking a little bit longer uh, never mind it's a free server by the way so as long as it's returning the data i'm happy with it okay now the third request uh, third object you will see the qualification is there my name is there so nothing is auto generated uh, in these two field of course avatar and other properties are auto generated so it is working perfectly fine now we have three records first and third 
are fine and the second one has some issue like the name is auto generated and the qualification it haven't considered so let's go ahead on the same line and try to implement the put request and let me tell you that put request is used to alter the data like you have a record already present on the server and you want to modify something so now we have a use case that our second record second user has a wrong data so we will try to fix that and here just notice that status code is going to be 200 because you are not creating a new record on the server you are just modifying the existing and you just see that it's completely identical to the post request uh, the only difference when we are calling this method in the api we specify which record you want to alter so we will see that in a moment i'm just going to copy everything from the post and i will paste inside the put request here in the user interface now the difference here that in post method you define the endpoint as user and you pass the object but here you want to edit so you have to explicitly define which id you want to edit and then you pass the same information like uh, uh, whatever updated information you want that you can pass so for you know just for demo sake i'm just going to create one id over here consider it like you have a list and you selected one item so there you will get the id and that id you are passing to perform edit operation okay and you have this information already with you so second record which we have is going to be updated with phd degree okay just for the sake we can see the information being updated real time and let's say uh, if we give it a run and see whether it's working or not so we are going to update this record over here which is currently uh, not having the qualification so let's change it to put method and try to run the application here in the simulator and there was a small mistake i was calling client.post instead of client.put which i just fixed now and it is working perfectly fine we got the success response status code of 200 and it should log successful in the debug console perfect so we have altered the record let's go ahead and verify that real quick on postman so i'm going to fetch new records and it should have updated record for the second user with qualification of phd and here we have it perfect so successfully we have covered get post and put method we fetch all the records we added new record and then we altered the existing record now it's time to perform the delete operation so let's go ahead to our code and we are going to copy everything from get request because this is quite similar to get in terms of implementation but the functionality works quite similar to put request because you have to explicitly define on which id you want to perform the action so in terms of signature you are not going to pass any any object uh, you just pass api with the id you want to perform action and then it will delete that particular id uh, that particular record from the database go ahead to our page quickly and i'm just going to copy paste everything from uh, maybe get request and then not everything just three lines are enough and instead of just passing users as an api we will pass users with particular id which we did same way uh, in case of put request right so we are calling a delete method we know the id and as i told you consider it as a list of users you have and you just swiped one of the user and you clicked on the delete button so you at that point you are aware of which id you are performing the action so let's go ahead and execute it and see for the real time whether it's working or not so we should get successful in the debug console uh which is taking a little bit longer and i hope there's no error perfect there's no error so we have deleted the id number two and this should be removed when i fetch the new list again and it's gone voila we have only two records left so all the crud operation is working fine you have seen get post put and delete how to fetch users how to add new record how to edit them and delete uh, successfully with the help of http client 
make sure to give it a like and subscribe the channel if you're new here share with your friends and colleagues who are trying to learn flutter and your feedback in the comment section is much appreciated you can talk about your experience with http client what library you prefer to use and if you have any question like what i did in particular step or i'm going to put this code on the github so you can follow along there you can raise uh, questions over there we are there to help you out and of course there's a discord link in the description so if you want to chat if you want to discuss something you're free to do so and if you want to support channel codex you can take membership or buy me a coffee on the given link in description thank you so much for watching i will see you guys in the next one